Why did God create hell? Many have asked, why did God create hell? Jesus explained the truth about hell's creation. Jesus talked a lot about hell in his teachings. In fact, we can go in more information in Jesus' words than from any other place in the Bible. You see, the creation of hell was before the beginning of time for the fallen angels. You see, hell is a place of suffering prepared initially for the devil for the, and for his angels. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, Amplified Bible. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, cursed ones, into eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels and demons. According to Jesus, hell was originally intended for the devil and his angels. However, humans end up there because they have chosen to align themselves with the devil and his angels. Popular teacher Charles Spurgeon commented, They had joined the devil in refusing to the Lord, so they imitating his rebellion, it was only right that they share in his punishment. Everlasting fire, hell, fire, was prepared for the devil and his angels. To put it another way, hell was never meant to be inhabited by any persons, though some individual will undoubtedly end up there. In the end, Satan and the other fallen angels were meant to be the ones who suffered. Within hell's confines, hell was created as a final punishment for the leaders of the Great Rebellion. But the Lord allows others to go there as well because of free will and man's God-given responsibility to choose his eternal destination, whether heaven or hell. At the end of time, Satan, the fallen angels, and the one-third of angels that rebelled beside him, will be cast into the lake of fire together. Those who have rebelled against God will feel the force of God's anger, and neither Satan nor his fallen angels will be spared the consequences of their actions. It has been established that fallen angels are a reality, despite the fact that the Iodate, that being fallen from grace, may be challenged for some individuals to comprehend, even if we would like to believe. Angels are incapable of falling. History and in the Bible shows us otherwise. There are very few references to fallen angels in the Bible because the vast majority of angels in heaven never lost their way or turned to evil. But some made that decision. Angels were made specifically to dwell in heaven with God, worship Him, and carry out His commands. They were made to bring glory to Him just like humans are. But we humans were made to live on earth while angels were designed to live in heaven. Despite this, these angels left their beginnings or their point of origin in heaven. They decided to use their free will to rebel against God's plans for their lives. In the Bible, angels who left heaven are considered fallen angels. What happened to these angels? According to the Bible, 2 Peter 2 4, For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned and cast them into hell, into the pits of darkness, for darkness, the leader of these angels are Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. The devil plotted against God, his maker, but he and the angels who followed him lost the battle. What happened after the fallen angels left heaven? Jude 6, the angels who did not keep their first estate, but abandoned the proper dwelling place. These he has kept in eternal chains under the thick gloom of utter darkness until the judgment of that great day. Jude 6 also explains what God did with these evil angels. The fallen angels were said to be one-third of the angelic host that followed Satan in his rebellion and also his attempts to overthrow God in his throne and reign to take over heaven. We also know that the attempt was a colossal failure and Satan and his rebellious angels were thrown down from heaven. Satan, who disguises himself as an angel of light, was in charge of these angels and acts as their leader. The devil plotted against God, his maker, and he and the angels who followed him lost the battle. After they were expelled from heaven, what happened to the fallen angels? Some fallen angels who are now in hell and others who are still on earth go their separate ways. According to Genesis 6, fallen angels intermarry with humans and four giants with human women. Satan's defeat was foretold from the beginning. We can see the end from the beginning in the first chapters of Genesis. God declares the serpent defeated 
were leading Adam and Eve astray. So yes, hell was created by God. Everything that ever was or is was created by God, including hell. Colossians 1.16 For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities. All things were created and exist through him and by his activity and for him. John 1.3 says, all things were made and came into existence through him and without him not even one thing was made revelation chapter 1 verse 18 and the ever living one living beyond time and space i died but see i am alive forevermore and i have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and hades hell or the lake of fire will also be the destination for those who reject christ second peter chapter 2 tells us for since God did not even spare the angels that sinned, but threw them into hell, into the pits of darkness, to be kept for judgment. And if he did not spare the ancient world, who rejected Noah, preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought the judgment of the flood on the world, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by reducing them to ashes, making them an example to those who would live life after, and if he rescued righteous Lot, who was tormented by the immoral conduct of the unprincipled and ungodly man, for that just man, while living among them, was tormented day after day by what he saw through their lawless acts. Then, in light of the fact of all this is true, be sure that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from tribulation, and how to, pre to keep the ungodly for punishment until the day of judgment. The good news is that people can't avoid hell. God, in his infinite mercy and love, has made a way of salvation for everyone who trusts in God's Son, Jesus Christ. The location of hell. Numerous theories have been suggested regarding the exact location and whereabouts of hell. It is widely believed that hell resides in the core of the earth. The Old Testament regards hell as Sheol, while the New Testament identifies it as Hades, meaning unseen or Gehenna, meaning the Valley of Hinnom. The Hebrew word Sheol can also be translated as pit or grave. Sheol and Hades are two names for the same place, which is where the dead go before they are judged. Gehenna refers to an eternal state of punishment for the wicked. Psalms chapter 19, 17. The wicked will turn to Sheol, even all the nations who forget God. Hell is a location that exists beyond the physical universe where the souls of mankind continue to live after death. This place is comparable to heaven. Hell is an eternal place of unending agony who reject God, Luke 16, 26. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set so that those who want to go over from here to you will not be able, nor will any people cross over from there to us. Those who are condemned to spend eternity in hell appear to have access to at least some parts of heaven and the ability to recall the events that took place on earth. Luke 16, 23 through 26. And in Hades, he raised his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his arms. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham, son, child, remember, during your life, you received your good things, while likewise Lazarus bad things, but now he is being comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, a great chasm has been set, so that those who want to go over from here to you will not be able, nor will any people cross over from there to us. When an unbeliever dies, his body goes to the grave, however his soul goes to Hades. For him, Hades is a place of suffering and remorse. Revelation 20 speaks in detail concerning the final state of Satan and the unbelievers. Verse 7 remarks that at the end of the thousand-year millennial kingdom, Satan will be released for one last battle along with the misled nations of the world. After he is defeated, the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and with sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then all unbelievers will be judged before the great white throne. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, 
he was thrown into the lake of fire. Unbelievers experience ongoing torment and are unable to escape the judgment. At the end of time, Satan and unbelievers will experience this second death in which there will be a lake of fire. This terrible circumstance is something that no one would ever choose for themselves. Because of this, God has made redemption available through Jesus for anyone who is able to believe the good news and believe that Jesus has provided this salvation. Even now, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Yes, hell exists according to the Bible. The reality of hell is described in the Bible using the same terminology that describes the reality of heaven. Revelation 20, 14, and 15, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. In fact, Jesus spent more time admonishing people about the perils of hell than he did about reassuring them about the possibilities of heaven. It is not out of the ordinary for people to believe in the truth of heaven while denying the reality of hell. Even though the Bible makes it quite clear that both heaven and hell exist, wishful thinking is to blame for some of this. It is far simpler to come to terms with the reality of the afterlife, but the idea of damnation is not nearly as tempting. This is the same mistake that human beings often make regarding dangerous behavior. The assumption that we will definitely be okay overrides our rational view that things might not end well. Rejecting the existence of hell can also be contributed to incorrect assumptions about what hell is. Hell is frequently depicted as a raging wasteland, a dungeon filled with cauldrons and pitchforks, an underground city teeming with ghosts and goblins. What Jesus said about him, according to what Jesus said, hell does not have a set amount of time, but rather exists forever. Those who are tormented in hell are doomed to an eternity. Jesus was quoted as saying, the fire never goes out. Jesus said this as a warning to people who caused others to stumble. This was a site outside of Jerusalem's walls that had been defiled by the worship of Molech and the sacrificing of human children. And as a result, it was turned into a dump where garbage burned day and night. And it was a powerful depiction of the end that was in store for those who were doomed. Thanks to the raging fires and the festering worms, Jesus said a very straightforward message where he said that it's better to give up anything rather than to go to hell because of how terrible it is. Because of this, it is not sufficient to consider the kingdom of God only in terms of reward. Rather, we must also consider it in terms of sacrifice. There is no way out of hell, and neither is there is any relief from it or silence to be found there. At the end of time, everyone will stand before Jesus Christ, and he will separate humanity into sheep and goats between those who have shown their faith in Jesus with their actions and their beliefs and those goats who do not demonstrate their faith in Jesus and do not trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus uses strong language about hell because hell is an actual place and it is unimaginably dreadful but he would more than just warn about the perils of hell. He also provided a path out of hell. He defeated sin, death, and the devil by living a life of perfect obedience and then by dying a sacrificial death on the cross for our sins and by rising from the dead to demonstrate his victory over sin and death. He encourages everyone to put their faith in him to avoid the terrible fate that we all deserve for our sins and earn eternal life instead. Jesus consistently made a distinction between hell and the kingdom of God. Hell is the only alternative to spending eternity in God's kingdom and it stands in direct contradiction to the wonderful companionship with God that lasts forever. Satan deceives many people that believe that God is a vengeful taskmaster who is prepared to send all who offend him to hell. They see no hope, but you see God hates sin and loves the sinner. Since we are all sinner, we are none able to be taken up to heaven without God's provision for our sins. This provision is in his son, Jesus Christ. Do we decide to go to hell? Matthew chapter 23, 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how 
can he escape the damnation of hell? The judge cast thee into hell. Luke chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. Now I say to thee, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear the one whom after he has killed someone has the power to throw that person into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Hell, a controversial subject. We do not know when we will pass into eternity. But the Bible teaches that there is hell for anyone who intentionally and knowingly rejects Christ as their Lord and Savior. Many passages could be cited to substantiate this. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will lead out his kingdom because of sin and all who do evil will be thrown into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 13 verses 41 and 42. Will a loving God send a person to hell? The answer from Jesus and the teachings of the Bible is clearly yes. He does not send man willingly. Men condemns themselves to eternal hell because his blindness and stubbornness. He has egotism and love of sinful pleasure. He refuses God's way of salvation and hope of eternal life. Let's say a person is sick and travels to the doctor. The doctor diagnoses the problem and recommends medication, but the advice is ignored. And after a few days, the person stumbles back to the doctor's office and says, it's your fault that I feel worse, do something. God has prescribed the remedy for spiritual sickness of the human race, his personal faith and commitment to Jesus Christ. Since the treatment is to be born again, if we refuse it, we must endure the horrible consequences. Yes, there is an alternative to heaven, no matter how you imagine it. We know that there will be separation from God and all that is holy and good. We live in an era where activities with value and utility occur all around us. But when the merry-go-round slows down, will the music and the ride fade? Each day of our lives, we are only one breath away from eternity. The believer in Jesus Christ has promises of heaven if he believes in Jesus Christ. The anticipation of his reward is more exciting than any of the delights the earth has to offer. There is then to be a day of where justice is to be done. Every human being has at least two commitments in the foreseeable future, neither of which can be afforded or escape. The first date is unique for each person, whereas the second date is similar for everyone. Hebrews 9, 27, and just as it is destined for man to die once, and after that, the judgment. Jesus outlined the two distinct paths that are available to people as they go through life. Every one of us is moving through this life and path that ultimately leads somewhere. This is a journey that we are all taking. Jesus is encouraging us, telling us to keep the roadway which leads to heaven rather than the highway that leads to hell. You cannot maintain a neutral stance and keep from moving forward. The easy path is the path to hell. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad, which leads to destruction, and there are many who go through it. If you are on that road, you will become one of a large group of reckless and indifferent individuals who travel along that broad specific road. It is able to provide pleasure, power, and relationships, but on the other hand, it is also rife with immorality, gruesomeness, and violence. We simply go through the motions of life without giving any thought to the kind of route that we are on or the destination that it leads to. However, there are indicators of potential danger. This broad road in which Jesus warns does not stay broad. It narrows as you go along through the nearest branches. If you are one of the people who use the broad road, you get trapped by dependencies. And on that path, someone can decide to partake in a particular sin, only to find out later that sin is already taken them, and the wide road becomes more restricted. If you take the easy road, it ultimately leads to misery, and if you take it, you will find that the pleasures of life gradually end up suffocating and choking you until time passes, and you will discover that the pleasures that this broad road has to offer are manufactured and never ever give what they promise. 
That's the way that the devil works. His approach is to give you his best at first, and then things get much worse. Then death stares the person in the face. Now you may say, but doesn't that happen to people who are on their way to heaven? Well, yes, it does. But the Bible says that those who do not know the Lord are without God and without the problems of this world and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever along with weeping and gnashing of teeth the hard path is the path to heaven matthew chapter 7 verse 14 for the gate is narrow and the way is constricted that leads to life and there are few who find it jesus cautioned people to stay away from the path that leads to destruction but he also urged them to follow the one that is narrow and leads to heaven. Notice how Jesus describes access to the hard path. To enter huge football stadiums, spectators must frequently go through small turnstile only accommodate a single patron at a time. And it's helpful to think of it this way to envision how we travel through the narrow way. No one else can be saved. The road is hard and it has a narrow gate. Which way will you decide to go? The punishment is a life sentence for those who reject Christ in a place called hell. The inmate in that place will be cut off from God, the origin of all that is good, excluded from the new heaven and the new earth, and in prison alongside the devil, demons, and fallen angels, anyone else who harbors resentment against the Creator. There will be torment, body and soul, night and day, for all of eternity and an eternity in the lake of fire where we will suffer the anguish of knowing the opportunities that we reject every single one of us has disobeyed god in some way and that sin merits the ultimate penalty which is death since all of our sin is ultimately against god and since god is an infinite and eternal being the punishment for sin is death, and it must also be infinite and eternal. Hell is this infinite and eternal punishment that we will endure for our sin. Jesus himself indicates that punishment in hell is just as everlasting as life in heaven. The wicked are forever subject to the fury and the wrath of God. Those who are in hell will know that their punishment is just and that they alone are to blame, are to blame, are to blame.